You're listening to Morning Meditation with Reverend Tashi Campbell. meditation, we look at the account of Samson and Delilah. I will read a portion of scripture from Judges chapter 16, reading from verse 4 through to 22. Sometime later, he fell in love with a woman in the valley of Sorek, whose name was Delilah. The rulers of the Philistines went to her and said, See if you can lure him into showing you the secret of his great strength and how we can overpower him so we may tie him up and subdue him. Each one of us will give you 1,100 shekels of silver. So Delilah said to Samson, Tell me the secret of your great strength and how you can be tied up and subdued. Samson answered her, If anyone ties me with seven fresh bowstrings that have not been dried, I'll become as weak as any other man. Then the rulers of the Philistines brought her seven fresh bowstrings that had not been dried, and she tied him with them. With men hidden in the room, she called to him, Samson, the Philistines are upon you. But he snapped the bowstrings as easily as a piece of string snaps when it comes close to a flame. So the secret of his strength was not discovered. Then Delilah said to Samson, You have made a fool of me. You lied to me. Come now, tell me how you can be tied. He said, If anyone ties me securely with new ropes that have never been used, I'll become as weak as any other man. So Delilah took new ropes and tied him with them. Then with men hidden in the room, she called to him, Samson, the Philistines are upon you. But he snapped the ropes off his arms as if they were threads. Delilah then said to Samson, All this time you have been making a fool of me and lying to me. Tell me, how can you be tied? He replied, If you weave the seven braids of my head into the fabric on the loom and tighten it with the pin, I'll become as weak as any other man. So while he was sleeping, Delilah took the seven braids of his head, wove them into the fabric and tightened it with the pin and called to him, Samson, Samson, the Philistines are upon you. Hmm. Samson, Samson, the Philistines are upon you. He awoke from his sleep and pulled up the pin and the loom with the fabric. Then he said to, then she said to him, How can you say I love you when you won't confide in me? This is the third time you have made a fool of me and haven't told me the secret of your great strength. With such nagging, she prodded him day after day until he was sick to death of it. So he told her everything. No razor has ever been used on my head. He said, because I have been a Nazirite dedicated to God from my mother's womb. If my head were shaved, 
my strength would leave me and I would become as weak as any other man. When Delilah saw that he had told her everything, she sent word to the rulers of the Philistines, come back once more, he has told me everything. So the rulers of the Philistines returned with the silver in their hands. After putting him to sleep on her lap, she called for someone to shave off the seven braids of his hair and so began to subdue him and his strength left him. Then she called, Samson, the Philistines are upon you. He awoke from his sleep and thought, I'll go out as before and shake myself free. But he did not know that the Lord had left him. Then the Philistine seized him, gouged out his eyes, and took him down to Gaza. Binding him with bronze shackles, they set him to grinding grain in the prison. But the hair on his head began to grow again after it had been shaved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My friends, there are three main players in this account. There's Samson, there's Delilah, and then we have the Philistine rulers. Let me begin with the Philistine rulers. The Philistine rulers promised Delilah money in exchange for information on the secret to Samson's strength. They played on Samson's emotional attachment to Delilah because they wanted to seize him, they wanted to subdue him, they wanted to get rid of him because he was to that point undefeated. Now Delilah, in this account Delilah is the object of Samson's affection, the object of Samson's love. The Bible says that he fell in love with her. There is nothing in the text that suggests that she loved Samson as much as he loved her or that she even loved him a little. Now, we see where Delilah was promised money in exchange for the secret to Samson's strength. So it is interesting to consider where she was concerned. Is it that... Uh, she was more driven by money than and, and her loyalty to her own people than she was to this man whom she perhaps had in her room, in her bed every night. The fact is her role in this account is that she worked closely from the very beginning. She worked closely with the enemy, which would be the Philistine rulers. And she played on Samson's love for her because she kept on saying how could you say that you love me you have been taking me for a fool and you will not tell me the secret to your great strength she knew how to nag she knew that Samson loved her she knew what she was providing for Samson because obviously he kept coming back and she nagged Samson into his breaking point and the Bible says at a point, Samson was just frustrated unto death. He couldn't take the nagging anymore. And he told her everything. He told her everything. And that night, she went and she told the Philistines that he has told me everything. And she put, the Bible says, she put Samson to sleep on her lap. Can you imagine the level of comfort and trust? Maybe there was trust. It's not clear because the Bible says he got up thinking that he would have released himself as per usual. So maybe he thought he was just untouchable. He could not be defeated. He could not be subdued. But let's look at Samson finally. When we read the text, we see that Samson is the person who fell in love with this woman and this woman was not his wife. 
She asked him the secret to his great strength, and he responded to her about that with lies at first. She first he said, If you tie me with seven bow strings, fresh bow strings that have not been dried, or if you use new ropes that have never been used, you know. One of the interesting things about this story of Samson and Delilah is after the second time, okay, let's say that he forgot about the first time. But after the second time, one would think that Samson would get himself out of Delilah's bed before things got any worse. Sure, we read this story now and we think, how stupid can one man be? But I want you to understand, my friend, that Samson's so-called stupidity was an indication of the fact that he had become blinded. He was spiritually blinded. Samson was no longer sensitive to the promptings of the Holy Spirit, so his downfall was closer than he realized. And on the third time, he said, Weave the seven braids of my head. And, you know, it happened again a third time, but he kept coming back. And after being nagged for days upon days, he told her everything at some point my friends samson no longer depended on god he no longer depended that's that's how it appeared that he no longer depended on god because he thought i will shake myself free this time around he was depending on himself he took the power and gift of god for granted and the truth is, we should not do as we please with what God has entrusted to us and then expect to be effective in the kingdom. No. Samson did not know that the Lord had left him. What a terrible state. And then when he fell asleep on Delilah's lap and his head was shaved, I mean, really? Your head is being shaved and you're fast asleep? But then he was so comfortable. He was blinded. He, he was where he should not have been. One times too many. Maybe ten times too many. He had several opportunities to get himself out of that situation. But he didn't. But Samson became blinded. And then the Bible says that when the Philistines subdued him, they gouged out his eyes. Samson's spiritual blindness manifested in the natural. They gouged out his eyes. But I love the way this account ends at verse 22. The, the, you can read the rest of the chapter and I encourage you to do so. But verse 22 says, But the hair on his head began to grow again after it had been shaved. An indication that Samson, God had not forgotten about Samson. God's purpose for Samson's life was still very much real and would still very much be manifested because God is God and his purpose will stand. Now I think about Sam, how Samson's life ended and I wonder where was Delilah after he had been seized? Where was she when his eyes were gouged out? What was she doing? What was she saying? What did she do with all the money that she collected? Was it worth it? Maybe for her. Where were his parents? Where was his wife? Where were his friends? Samson was all alone, but God had mercy on him. His hair began to grow again. But this is what I want to leave with us today as we reflect on Samson and Delilah. Consistently living a life contrary to what God has said will impair your ability to discern. Three things I want to say. Consistently living a life contrary to what God has said will, dis will impair your ability to discern. One, the presence of the enemy. Two, the danger zones and three 
unhealthy friendships or relationships. Sure, we think Samson was so silly. Why did he stay? This woman kept asking you the secret of your strength and she acted upon everything you told her, but yet still he remained. But the truth is, if we were to really look around us and even in our own lives, sometimes we will realize that there are situations in which we find ourselves that are, we know, sometimes we know that this is not where I need to be. But then we remain there until we hit rock bottom. Consistently living a life contrary to what God has said will impair your ability to discern the presence of the enemy, to discern when you are in a danger zone, and to discern when unhealthy friendships or unhealthy relationships need to be broken off. So what's going on with you today? Has a particular situation within which you find yourself impaired your ability to discern God? Have you gotten to the place where the promptings of the Holy Spirit are no more in your own life? When was the last time you heard from God? When was the last time the Holy Spirit prompted you, convicted you to repent of your sins, to, to do something and you totally ignored it is a dangerous place to be when we no longer hear from God, when the Spirit of God, when we are no longer sensitive to the promptings of the Holy Spirit or to the presence of the Holy Spirit. Let us take heed this morning. Let us take heed this morning. Let us pray. Father, we come to you in no other name but the name of Jesus Christ. And we thank you, mighty God, that you continue to pursue us, to love us, to be with us. Lord, we thank you for the lessons to be learned from this example of Samson. Samson was the strongest man who ever lived, but then he made some decisions that was it didn't end well for him but i pray god that you will allow us to take heed to be wise and to be obedient to you forgive us lord for the times we ignored your promptings and lord we pray in the name of jesus christ that you will rescue us from anything from any person from any connection that we have that you don't approve of. We submit to your Lordship. We honor you and we say thanks for making a way out, for giving us another chance. In Jesus' name we pray. Can you say amen? Amen.